Hi everyone, and welcome to this virtual chemistry lesson, where we will introduce the concepts equilibrium reactions, acid base pairs, and buffer solutions. Three concepts that are all sort of interconnected with each other, which is why they're all included in the same video. Uh, please note that this video is in uh, is for an introduction course in chemistry the Swedish Chemistry 1 course, which means that we will just introduce these concepts. I will not go through, for example, how you do calculations in equilibrium reactions, uh, nor how you do calculations for buffer solutions. Uh, we're just going to introduce the, the overall general procedure here, how things work all overall. Uh, but if you never talked about any of these concepts before, um, then please enjoy this video. So, acetic acid. You know, um, hopefully, uh, at least if you're one of my students, you know that acetic acid is a weak acid. Therefore, whenever we have acetic acid mixed with water, some of the molecules will dissociate and donate protons to water molecules according to the following expression. You remember that weak acids are only partially dissociated, whereas strong acids are completely dissociated. Okay. So in this expression, some, not all, but some of the acetic acid molecules will react with water, donate a proton, and we form the acetate ion and the oxonium ion here. So. Let's see, what happens if we add acetic acid to neutral distilled water mixed with BTB? So I did this yesterday. I took three test tubes. Uh, to these test tubes I added neutral water, pH 7, and I added BTB to the solution. Uh, BTB is an acid base indicator. <clears throat> it's yellow if we have an acidic solution. It's green if we have a neutral solution, and it's blue if we have a basic solution. The reason why it's green, when we have a neutral solution, uh, if you remember the uh, auto-dissociation of water, we have equal amounts of both oxonium and hydroxide ions. So we have equal amounts of the acidic thing and the basic thing, so equal amounts of yellow and blue. And yellow mixed with blue is green, so we notice a nice green color for neutral water here. So, then I took out a bottle of acetic acid. Uh, this is in Swedish. It says etiksyra, which is uh, Swedish for acetic acid. And it's uh, at two molar concentration. And I took this and I just added a few drops to the leftmost test tube. As you can see, adding acid to a water solution will make it acidic, just as you know before. All right, so this isn't anything new, hopefully. But let's see here. Uh, acetic acid formed the acetate ion. And a negative ion like this means that we can probably combine it with a positive type of ion and acquire salts of it. For example, sodium acetate, which is written like this. It's easily formed if you, for example, let sodium metal react with uh, acetate ions, for example. No, sorry. Uh, sodium reacting with acetic acid forms sodium acetate. Uh, but yeah, this is often simplified just to NaAc, which stands for the acetate ion, instead of CH3COO. So, this is interesting. We have a salt of the product formed by the acetic acid. Let's see what happens if we add this to the neutral water solution mixed with BTP. So, I took out a jar of sodium acetate. This is in Swedish again. It says not to acetate, but yeah, that's uh, sodium acetate in English. And as you can see, it's a nice little white powder. And I took this uh, and added this spoonful of powder to the right hand tube. And here's something very interesting. You can see that this tube turned blue. If BTB turns blue, it means that we've formed additional hydroxide ions. So we've made a more basic solution here. Hmm, interesting. So apparently the acetate ion is a base. 
And the chemical reaction for this base, when it reacts with water, is this. It's going to need to take up a proton and water can donate protons, it can act as an acid. And then we form this molecule and the hydroxide ion. And this molecule, if you remember, CH3COOH, that's the acetic acid. So the product is acetic acid. And you remember that previously when we added acetic acid to water, we formed the acetate ion and, and oxonium. So this is interesting. So the acid, the weak acid in a reaction, will form a base. And the base in a reaction will form an acid. And this is when they react with water. So, for all weak acids and bases, these pairs are called conjugate acid base pairs. Because apparently they are interconnected. One forms the other and then back again. So, and something that we need to be able to do during chemistry is to identify these pairs. We can sum summarize them the following way. We write uh, the acid, then we write slash, and then we write the base. And we always start with the acid before we write the base. So for example, if we look at the dissociation of acetic acid, that is, we start mixing acetic acid with water, then we write this equation because this is what we start with. Even though we form a base, we will start with this because this is what we mix. The first acid-base pair in this reaction will be CH3COOH. Because, as you remember, acetic acid is an acid. And this acetate ion is the base. These belong to each other. The only difference between them is a proton. And that's how you usually identify an acid-base pair. We have another acid-base pair in this reaction. That is this molecule, which you see can, uh, which you've seen is an acid, and it can donate protons. And this molecule, water, which in this context acts as a base together with acetic acid, um, so it can take up and then it can give away. So this is also an acid-base pair: the oxonium and water. So usually when we have an expression like this, we have two acid-base pairs. If we have something that acts as an acid and something that acts as a base, then we will have two pairs, two acid-base pairs. So. so, for the following reaction, I'd like you to identify the acid-base pairs. And uh, please pause the video and try this on your own. Remember that the difference between the acid and base that belong to each other the conjugate acid base pair is just a proton. So pause the video, try this, and then uh, resume the video and I will continue talking. Right. So step one here is to identify which substance donates a proton to its conjugate and where its conjugate base will be. Then we know the substance that acts, accepts a proton and its conjugate acid. So if you look here, we have the ammonium ion here, and when that's combined with this, it forms ammonia. The difference here is a proton. Apparently this uh, ion gives away a hydrogen. You see it's four here, it's three here. So this, if it gives away a proton or hydrogen, it's an acid, so this will be our acid. And this is what is formed, which you know is a base. So that will be the first pair. Then we look at the other one here. Here, this can react with this to form this and this. So this will be an acid and this then you saw acting as a base before. So this is the second pair. And here I see that I've introduced a double arrow and I will talk about that in just a moment, don't you worry. Yeah, and then we can write them like this, the acid-base pair. Is the acid first, then the base, the acid, and the base as such. All right, so uh, let me try and explain why I used a double headed arrow over there. We need to talk about the reversible reactions. When products of a reaction can sort of react back to the reactants, we call these reactions reversible reactions. 
and the two reversible reactions can be summarized in an equilibrium expression. For example here, we have the acetic acid, which you saw reacting with water, form the acetate and oxonium. But you know that the acetate can also act as a base and react back and form uh, the acetic acid again. So these are two different reactions. One forms acetate, the other forms acetic acid. But we can write them together like this um, in a so-called equilibrium expression. We could also write it like this, where we start with the uh, acetate ion mixed with water to form the acetic acid and hydroxide. The difference between these is where you start. You can think of this uh, as the two test tubes I had before, right? Uh, the first test tube I mixed acetic acid with water, then you write these on the reactant side, and then you end up with these as products. In the uh, other example, I started with sodium acetate, which formed acetate ions, that then react with water. Um, and if these react, we will form acetic acid. So it depends on what you start with, I would say. The double-headed arrow says that the reaction can go both ways. They're reversible. Uh, and chemists are usually kind of lazy, so we like to write as little as possible. That means that we'd like to write two reactions as one, if they sort of belong together, and then we write this double-headed arrow that you see in between here. And that indi indicates that we have an equilibrium reaction. Acetic acid reacts to form acetate, and acetate can react and form acetic acid back again. And this is how we can explain why some acids are strong and why some acids are weak. Whenever we have two opposing reversible reactions that happen at the same time, they will eventually reach a point where the concentrations on either side of the arrow remain unchanged. And let me just change that, because that is poor spelling on my part. Yeah. So, here. So, eventually a point is reached when concentrations are constant. Hmm. So let's look at when the acid acetic acid rests with the water here. We form the acetate ion and oxonium. When we reach the point where the concentration of the acid is constant and the concentration of the base here is constant, they don't change over time, then we reached equilibrium, uh, which means that we have a sort of balance here, a balance between the reaction going to the right and a balance and to that of the reaction going to the left. So a balance between these two reversible reactions. That's called an equilibrium. So whenever we have constants here, then we have an equilibrium. All right. So if we look at acetic acid, uh, if it's uh, and it depends on concentration a little bit, but uh, let's look at uh, 0 0.100 molar acetic acid. It's only dissociated to 1.3%. And that's something we can easily calculate when we know a little bit more chemistry. So, when we reached equilibrium, 98.7 of the um, units will be in the acid form, and 1.3% of the units will be at, uh, uh, as a base form, as the conjugate base here. And no more. These percentages, which we can translate to concentration, are unchanged over time. And we can explain these by the speed of the two opposing reactions. The more we have over here, the faster the reaction to the right will go. And the more we have on this side, the faster the reaction to the left will go. All right? When the speed of the reaction from the left, uh, of the reaction going to the right, when that speed is equal to the reaction going to the left, then we've reached equilibrium. The concentrations remain unchanged and the rates are equal. In this case, we mix acetic acid with water, but that forms a weak base and a very strong acid H3O+. Since we have a base and an acid here that can react with each other, they can quickly react back again to form acetic acid. 
Both of these reactions will occur, acid plus base, base plus acid. Uh, and what we notice is these percentages. So, why is this percentage lower than this percentage? Um, and I would like to uh, try and answer that this way. You know that acetic acid is a weak acid, it's not a very good acid. And we can mix that with water, which isn't a very good base. So we have two uh, rather shoddy, not very good acids and bases here. What's formed is a rather bad base, but also a strong acid. So the strong acid here sort of takes over, which will push the reaction to the left and making it go faster than the reaction from the uh, going here to the right. So bad acid plus bad base will result in a slower reaction speed to the right than when we have a bad base and a good acid. Um, but it's also dependent on how much we have, and when we have the vast majority on this side, it can sort of compete with 1.3% uh, on the right-hand side. So I hope you hope you follow that uh, way of reasoning. Bad acid plus bad base is not as fast a reaction than uh, bad base plus good acid. We like, uh, of course, as natural scientists, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, illustrate various types of phenomenon using graphs and figures. So let's look at this. We mix uh, HAC with water. What happens? Well, if we mix acetic acid with water, we will start at a high concentration. We will start with 100%, right? Uh, nothing has been dissociated yet. So we start fairly high, and then as the reaction progresses, we, as you saw, a part of it will be dissociated. The uh, acetate ion, which you know is a bad base, or a weak base, it starts at no concentration, right? Because we have nothing of it formed yet. But over time, we will form more and more of the acetate ions, like so. So the concentration of acetic acid decreases over time and the concentration of the acetate ion increases over time. And these are sort of connected in this equilibrium expression that you saw. The more acetate we form, the faster the reaction from this back to acetic acid will go. So as we move here in the x-axis over time, more and more acetate is formed. And that means that more and more will react back. So it, the speed here will decrease slowly over time. And eventually, we see that the concentration is unchanged. Uh, if you were to take the slope of this line, you will find the rate, and they would be the same here, unchanged. But we can say the following. From this graph, you can read that once we've reached constant concentration, straight lines here, then we've reached equilibrium. The concentration don't have to be the same value, of course, but uh, they have to be constant and unchanged. So around here somewhere, uh, we've reached equilibrium, where we have unchanging concentrations. And then it will just continue to the right here as a nice straight line, unfaced and unchanged. Right, and then to the final concept of this video, buffer solutions, which is, again, a rather complicated concept. But uh, bear with me. So, a buffer solution is a solution that is capable of resisting changes to pH. If we, for example, add an acid or a base, the pH doesn't change very much of the solution. And the explanation to this is that when we work with, for example, a weak acid, we will automatically also get a weak base. Remember the expression that we used throughout this video? Uh, the acid forms a base, but we only had 1.3% on this side approximately, right? So it's not much base, quite a lot of acid. If we add sodium acetate to this solution of acetic acid, we can add more on this side, so we get like uh, comparable percentages on either side of the arrow here, eventually. So, 
if we make sure that we have a decent amount of acetate ions and a decent amount of uh, acetic acid in an equilibrium expression like this, then we have a very interesting thing. We have a solution that contains both acid and base at the same time. So let's say that we do this. We have a beaker here. This is uh, the extent of my drawing skills. As of yet, this is supposed to be a beaker with a solution in it. To this beaker, I've added um, acetic acid, which you can see here. And I've just drawn two, but there's billions upon billions of these right in here. And then we added sodium acetate salt, which, uh, which splits apart into free acetate ions. So we'll have a billions upon billions of those as well in here. But for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to draw two of each. That means that we have a solution that contains the acid and the base here. So we have both as weak acids and bases here, and they're in an equilibrium, they're in a balance between each other, like so. So, if I add hydrochloric acid to this, the strong acid will come into contact with this weak base here and be neutralized. So it doesn't change very much. The pH doesn't change as dramatically as it would have if we added, for example, hydrochloric acid. If I add sodium hydroxide to the mixture, well, we add a strong base and we have a weak acid here that can react with it and neutralize it as well. And the pH doesn't at all change as dramatically as it would have if we only added sodium hydroxide to straight pure water. Eventually, if we, for example, take the if we, if we talk about adding sodium hydroxide, eventually we will have reacted with all of these weak acids here, right? And then we will have a dramatic pH change. Uh, but before then, uh, every addition won't do that much to the pH of the solution. So to summarize, if we have a buffer solution, weak acids can neutralize strong bases added, and weak bases can neutralize strong acids added, to an extent. There's always a limit, of course, and that depends on how concentrated your buffer solution is. So, we're going to end this video with a real-life example. Uh, buffer solutions are essential for life, as life is pH-sensitive. Uh, bacteria, for example, can't grow in too low nor too high pH. We need to have... Uh, they have their optimum... Uh, growth at a specific pH value. Same goes for us, for example, if we talk about human blood. Human blood has a pH of about 7.4. If this is changed much, for example, beyond 7.8 or below 6.8 approximately, it's lethal. We, It's, it's probable that uh, our cells and proteins will, will stop functioning as they're supposed to, and we will, yeah, we will die. So we need we need a mechanism in the human body to resist pH changes, right? So, at, at least to an extent. We can't, for example, resist being dipped in acid, but um, small amounts. We have a buffer in our blood. The following. Carbonic acid and hydrogen carbonate ions. These two can react back and forth. The carbonic acid which you may have in your fizzy drinks, like Coca-Cola. Um, that's an acid, and therefore can react with uh, bases that come into contact with the blood to form this. And this molecule, the hydrogen carbonate, is a base. As you can see, it can react back to form this. So we have a balance here between a strong acid and a strong base. Uh, so we have a way of yeah, so we have a weak acid and a weak base in here. And that means that we have uh, substances that can uh, react with strong acids or strong bases coming into contact with our blood, to an extent, of course. That keeps our blood at a nice pH of about 7.4. Thank you for your attention. I hope you learned something today. And I will see you in another video.